Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you here like always. It almost seems like lately I'm having to do so much more work inside of this aviary than when I was breeding. As many of you know, my breeding season is officially over, but lately I find myself in this aviary more often than not. And I thought that now with the season being over, I was gonna start catching a little bit more of a break, but it doesn't seem to be the case. It almost seems like I'm in here every single day having to feed more often, having to give water more often. And it may be due to the fact that there are more birds inside of this bird room. Now that the season is over, there are so many chicks that I have to overlook, make sure that they're molting properly, make sure that they're staying healthy. If I see any of them fluff up, isolate them, give them some heat, etc., and so on. So it does become more complicated the more birds that you have. But you're not here to listen to me complain about my breeding season or what's happening after the breeding season. You're here because of the thumbnail that you saw in this video, and that is wild type colors versus mutation now what am i talking about when i say wild type colors versus mutation well first of all for those that don't know wild type colors in any bird species is the color that is naturally occurring in the wild for that species now i'm going to tell you for example we'll use the goldian because that is going to be one of the easiest species to give an example of in the wild we're not going to focus on head color just back color in the wild, the Gouldians exist in green. That is their natural color in the wild. Over the course of years, as this bird has been manipulated by aviculturists, it has come in a variety of different mutation, from pides, yellows, silvers, blues, latinos, albinos, you name it, there is a mutation for it. And this is because over the years, breeders have genetically changed these birds to look different. Now, what or how does that affect the wild type color? Well, over the years, there's been so much genetic modification done to these birds to change the color of it that many normal green back color birds are split to something else. Now, how does that affect you as a breeder? How does it affect a breeder who is working with a lot of birds? Well, if the breeders focus is to focus on only wild type colors and they get two normal greenback Gouldians, they may be under the impression that these birds are only wild type, but they actually aren't. These two birds could be split to anything. They could be split to yellow, they could be split to blue, they could be split to anything. Why? Because over the course of so many years of breeders just breeding however, or not really focusing on just breeding wild type to wild type, now, these two greenback color birds could produce yellows, they could produce blues, they could produce any color underneath of the rainbow. And this is something that could affect breeders that are trying to focus on wild type colors only. So one of the things that personally I like to do here in my aviary is that I keep pairs that are only wild type colors and I try not to mix them at all with any of my mutations or any of the birds that I know that are split to something else. And this is gonna help us in the future because the way that I see things, the way that they're going, maybe not now, maybe not in five years, maybe not in 10 years, but maybe in 20 years, for example, there will come a point where the wild type color will be worth more than the mutation itself because they're gonna be so much harder to find. There's been many cases where I've bought birds that are normal wild type birds and I expect to receive normal wild type chick colors from these birds, but I end up getting some weird mutation from these birds. So if you're working with birds, just make sure to keep and differentiate these two different things. If you have the ability to do so, try to make sure that you breed wild type to wild type. And if you work with mutations, try to make sure that you keep that separation so that it helps little by little. If everybody does the same thing, we're able to improve aviculture and not run into certain problems later down the line. Now, don't get me wrong. There is absolutely nothing wrong with working with mutations. Personally, I love them. There are different types of people, there are different types of aviculturists, there are those who focus only on wild type colors, there are those who focus only on mutations. Personally me, I can't pick and choose, so I like to work with both of them. I have mutations, I have wild types, I have splits. I like every single color underneath of the rainbow and I focus on every single one of them. But I do try to keep that separation between them just so that it doesn't affect my breeding later on and I'm able to get, always get back to the wild type colors. Now mutations in specific, why is it that some people breed them? 
there's a lot of variations to why people may work with mutations. And there's absolutely nothing wrong, like I said, working with mutations. I personally do it because I love it. There are people who do it because they just love being able to manipulate the genetics of a bird, being able to maybe come up with the next big color mutation in any sort of species. There are people who do it because there is more money in mutations than there is in the wild type bird. For example, I'll give you the example of the Gurian finch. While a normal greenback may go for $100, a blueback may go for 150, 175, 200, depending on what part of the country you're at or what part of the world you're from. So as you can see, there is a large difference between a normal color and a mutation. But eventually with time, like I said, this is something that will change. Eventually it's gonna flip and now the wild type color is gonna be so much harder to find that it will be more expensive than the normal color. Why? Because like I mentioned before, you have two normal birds that you think that are going to produce normal colored chicks and they end up giving you mutations. So little by little, over the course of the years, it will become harder to get these normal colored birds. So hopefully this video is helpful for you guys. Hopefully you learn to maybe keep that difference between them. Try to preserve those wild type colors. If you have birds that are only producing wild type colors, separate them to one side. Make sure that you work with those and only introduce wild type colors to those right there and then keep the normal mutations to the other side. Now you can refresh like I do on many occasions. There's been many times where I have to refresh bloodlines that are mutations with a wild type color because over the years, as you work harder and harder with mutations, you're gonna notice that maybe some of these mutations become weaker because mutations tend to generally be a bit weaker than wild type birds. So what you end up doing is that you get some wild type birds, you introduce it into the mutation and you start to strengthen that mutation with splits. Then you get these splits and you breed them back into the mutation and you are able to continue going with a stronger mutation. Now, that is a topic for a completely different video and eventually i'll get to that in another video i hope that you guys have enjoyed this one like always if you did remember to hit thumbs up like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and like always guys we will see each other in the next video bye